We found my Uncle Stanley's powerful diary from when he was 16 in a box stored in our grandma's garage. He started writing after he and my dad and their family were forced to leave their home in California and were wrongly imprisoned during World War II as a result of the United States Executive Order 9066. Kazan, will you get me some water? I'm so thirsty. Such. I feel no bitterness to the government for the evacuation, though I still feel it wasn't right. Do I think that it was constitutional? No, I do not. We did not go through the processes of law. They didn't have any evidence. Do I think racial prejudice was involved? Yes, I do. I personally will proceed to forget the whole mess will try to become a greater man from having gone through such experiences. Keep faith in America and look forward to the future. Tomorrow at Los Angeles, UCLA plays USC to determine who goes to the Rose Bowl. Gosh, I wish I were home so I could see that game. I hope UCLA wins. Well, UCLA finally won, beat USC. Score was 14-7 and was it exciting? had me gasping for breath on every play. When snow is blowing across the ground, it looks like carbon dioxide subliming and being blown with a fan. The crunch of snow underfoot, the barracks with snow covering them. I never saw it or touched it until I came here. Today was the day last year in which this whole mess started. Last year it was Sunday. In the afternoon, I turned on the radio. I heard the stunning news. Pearl Harbor bombed. I hope the war ends this year, but definitely. Well, today is the first day of the year 1943. I resolve to be more tolerant, not only with my family, but with everyone. I resolve to learn as much as I can. Wonder where I'll be next year. Wonder when the war will end. My house from 1931 until 1942. My house from 1942 until 1943. My house in 1943. Today I got my report card. I went down in algebra, but improved in chemistry. Back home, I always got all A's. Of course, the competition is harder here. Maybe 50 years from now, I'll be visiting the moon on the afternoons. Maybe we'll be able to be radioed up to Europe or Asia in person have a sending station which sends your molecules to a receiving station which assembles them in their proper places. Boy, some fun I could have. Just step into a sending booth, put some slugs into the machine, and zip, I'm in Cairo, Egypt, or Berlin, Germany. Oops, wrong number. Doggone it! Our room is so noisy that I can't study. There's my brothers Frank and Walt and his friend George, my sister Soch, Ma and Pa, and the radio 
guitar and trumpet all in the room. Oh well, I should crab. Everyone is entitled to his part in this house. I got my first F on a test today. First one I ever got. I got my algebra paper back today. Doggone, another F. Gotta do something about that. Lately, I haven't been feeling so hot. Maybe I have TB, or high blood pressure, or bad heart, or all. And maybe it's just my imagination. At any rate, I better go see the doc soon. Hmm, maybe you're dead. Today I went to Sunday school, as usual. But it was hard getting there. It was so cold. It was 20 degrees below zero. As soon as I take a hundred steps, my eyelashes would have icicles on them. So I duck into each laundry room, melt the icicles off, and keep on going. Lonesome for home. Just look at that blizzard outside, I exclaimed as I stood peering out of the window at the snow. I glanced across the room at Ma, who was muttering something about California never having snow. I wish I were home again. I focused my eyes on the snow once more and saw that it was being whipped around in swirls and swirls, and soon my eyes were no longer on it, but looking through it and my mind was far away and was carrying me back one year, back to California, San Gabriel, California. The tall, beautiful eucalyptus yawning in the morning sun. The birds are singing as they dart into its branches to feed their young. Young, tender plants have peeped up just a little bit more and the tiny dewdrops on their dark green leaflets look like diamonds. Come on, Stan. The dinner bell just rang. Last Tuesday, I went to a meeting held by the army concerning voluntary enlistment. A lot of people wanted to know if they could have some guarantees so that after the war was over, they wouldn't have their citizenship taken away. He says it'll show that we are truly Americans because we volunteer despite the kicking around that we got. On the other hand, if we all do not volunteer, instead of improving our relations with the other Americans, it would make it worse. Right now, I'm probably the most confused man-boy alive. I'm mixed up about everything. I have faith in almost nothing. There were a number of Japanese Americans who would later refuse to register when it became mandatory. They were sent to a federal prison, including Stan's cousin, Paul Nakadate, something that must have weighed heavily on him. Every once in a while, I feel tremendously moody. I sort of want to get away to a quiet place outside, where the fresh air blows, where only nature lives, where no one can bother me, and where I can contemplate and think as deep as I want. Friday night, I finished reading about a great Negro, George Washington Carver. My own feelings and interests and loves fall remarkably close to Carver's. He and I both love nature. He and I both love and can do creative artwork. We both like science. He too was handicapped by racial prejudice, only more so than I. But now I know what I'd like to be. My heart tells me to be an artist writer. P.S. I finally got all A's. You know, whenever I need refreshment and feel kind of tired of life, or whenever I need comfort, 
or to reduce a swelling head or lift my morale, I look at the stars. They seem to have a silent rhythm, like music. I wonder what they think. They were there when I came, and they will be there when I leave. To them, my life is microscopial. Just a flicker in eternity. Battalion, United States Infantry, composed entirely of American citizens of Japanese descent, is honored for valorous combat service by General Mark Clark, commander of the Allied Fifth Army. Frank has been assigned to the 442nd, but he hasn't written to us for about a month, so I guess I worry a little myself, but more immediate things are worrying me. Selective service was just opened up to the Nisei again, and recently I turned 18 draft age. This place. It's one of the most democratic places I've ever lived in, and yet it isn't. Though we had our liberty taken away and such, which are supposed to go with democracy, we still hold elections. And most of all, we behold everyone as equals. I registered today. A statement to the United States government by an American citizen of Japanese descent. Even though their parents were still locked up, many Nisei were drafted straight out of the camp and put on the front lines in World War II. Stanley was not allowed to keep a diary, but he sent home letters and drawings to his parents and often to his sister Sach. Writing you a letter from somewhere in France. The first day I joined the 442nd, I came walking out of the mess, and by golly, I thought I saw a familiar face. Well, god damn it, it was Frank. I guess it was the first time I saw him in two years, but he hasn't changed at all. I was plenty glad to see him. Cousin Willie wasn't looking so good, though. I also saw Murata, who joined the 442nd last year and was in a very big battle. Murata wa boku ni imasu. War is very scary. Right now, I'm up front here, living on top of a mountain. The Jerry's are on the next mountain. I would just about forget the war if it wasn't for the artillery lobbing shells over us, and if I couldn't see the dead Jerry's lying around below. No one pays much attention to them when we go working around them. They're just part of the landscape now. So the dead ones don't bother me anymore. They say it's the live ones I should worry about. Hello, everybody. Hope you're on your way to California. Whoopee! I've been lying in foxholes and slit trenches for quite some time now. So my morale wasn't too high until yesterday when I got about 20 letters at once. Boy, did that make me feel good. Letters from Pa, Ma, Walt, and Soch, and about all my pals. I read them over and over again. We take rations up to where we are by mules. Mountains are plenty steep. When we started, I was leading the mules, but by the time I reached the top, Guess you know by now that I'm fighting in the Italian Apennines. Rugged and how. Boy, I sure wish the war blows over quick so I can go home to California too. Don't worry about me. Love, Stanley. Stanley died trying to rescue another soldier only a few weeks before the war in Europe ended. He was posthumously awarded the Purple Heart Medal for his bravery. His headstone says Wyoming, but really, I think he'd like you to know he was from San Gabriel. <laughs> <laughs> 
California. Today I'm writing my first entry in this journal. It is no special day, but I have to start someplace. Freedom must be won. 